routine day on Moon Base Alpha, as Earth's great satellite, blasted out of orbit by a tremendous explosion of nuclear waste materials, moved through space on its journey into the unknown. Suddenly, a deep rumbling shatters the calm, and Alpha shakes and vibrates as though in the grip of a giant hand. In main mission, Commander John Koenig barks out commands. Sandra, all scanners and sensors are full. Yes, sir. Kano, computer report as fast as you can get it. Right, Commander. Paul, activate big screen. Yes, sir. What's happening, John? I don't know, Victor, but the way this place is shaking, we'd better find out fast. Commander, on the big screen, look. Phew. If I didn't know better, I'd swear we were in the middle of a terrestrial hurricane. All that debris out there, like a cosmic minefield. Commander, computer reports radiation level at danger point and rising. Paul, activate radiation and meteorite defense screens. We're going to red alert. Seal all bulkheads. Damage units and medical, stand by. The storm builds to a ferocious climax, with sound levels beyond the limits of human endurance. And suddenly, all personnel black out and fall to the floor, oblivious to the fury raging around them. And then, just as suddenly, it is over. And one by one, they revive as the moon emerges from the turbulence. Sandra, get damage reports from all sections. Paul, do we have power? I think so, sir. Yes, we do. Good. Activate big screen. Well, we're in the clear, at least. Commander, no major damage reported, just a few minor injuries. That's a help. Victor, what do you think that was all about? According to the navigation charts, there should have been no stars or planets or any concentrations of matter in this area. Nothing but empty space. And how do you explain all that debris we passed through? The only conclusion I can reach is that we have come through a black hole in space. A black hole? But wouldn't that have drawn us into a dying star and incinerated us? Not if we passed through the outer fringes only and came within the gravitation field of another star, which... Commander, a new contact. Paul, bring it in on the big screen. A planet. A big one. Kano, computer readout. Diameter 7926 miles at equator. Atmosphere breathable. Cloud cover H2O. Surface temperatures compatible with human existence. John, look at that cloud cover, broken by patches of blue. The general configuration, could it possibly be... Commander, I get life signs. Commander, I don't believe it. That planet, it's ours. There's no mistake, John, it is. It's the Earth. The Earth? Oh, we're home! Oh, hey, 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 oh, hey, oh, thank oh, God! Oh, God. Oh, oh, it. It. it sure looks like the Earth. But there's something strange about all this. Alan, get Eagle One ready. We're going down and take a closer look. Within the hour, Eagle One is headed toward the planet with a landing party headed by John Connor. Still no response to our call, Helena? No, John, nothing. Strange. They didn't answer our calls from main mission either. Every instrument reading and visual sighting confirms that this is our Earth but we get no radio communication or any other sign of the civilization we knew. But we do get unmistakable life signs. Cloud cover very heavy, Commander, but there's a break right over there at 3 o'clock. Looks like a good landing area below it. Time we got some answers. Set her down, Alan. Landing on a hilltop on the surface, they step out of the eagle, leaving Alan inside, and find themselves overlooking a veritable Garden of Eden. Green valleys and cool waters ringed in by a circle of mountains that shut out a hostile, unseen world beyond. And look, John, shepherds tending their flock, women carrying water from the well. Look at the robes they're wearing. It's as though we... Yeah, I know. As though we had stepped back thousands of years in time. I think that's exactly what we have done, John. What do you mean? According to computer readings I made on board Alpha, and every calculation I've come up with since, we are back at or near the beginning of time the Old Testament year 3347 B.C. Ridiculous, Victor. There must be some mistake. Maybe the storm threw the computer off kilter. No mistake, John. Somehow we must have passed through a time warp in space when we passed through the black hole. We have returned to the Earth of biblical times. Incredible. Koenig here. What's up, Alan? Our onboard instrumentation seems to have gone haywire, Commander. What's wrong? Computer says it's the year 3347 B.C. Computer is right, Alan. 
You're kidding, Commander. It's no joke, Alan. Keep an eye on the instrument readings and let us know if anything else unusual shows up. We're going down into the land of Canaan. They certainly seem to be a happy, carefree lot. I wonder if this is a celebration day of some kind, or do they always live it up like this? Victor, how's your knowledge of the language? Fortunately, I've brought along something I've been working on for years. I call it the Comulator. Looks like a modified Comla. Exactly. I've built in a miniature computer which is programmed not only to translate what is said to us, but translate what we say into any language instantaneously. Look, that bearded old man haranguing the crowd over there. Let's see if we can understand it. You have sinned in the eyes of the Lord. If you do not turn away from the path of evil and repent, then will he surely destroy you? It works. We can understand everything. Go tell it to the sheep and camels and the elephants, you crazy old coot. Maybe you'll get them to repent. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord will send down rain for 40 days and 40 nights, and every living thing will be destroyed. It hasn't rained for six months, and there's not a cloud to be seen in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Sinners, blasphemers, you have been warned. I can do no more. Yes, you can. You and your sons can go sail your crazy boat up over the mountain. <laughs> Good Lord. You know who that old man is? It's Noah. And the boat the young man mentioned, it must be the Ark. He was right about one thing, though. The weather seems to be perfect. But as crazy as it sounds, if that is Noah, then we know how the story ended. I wonder, is the Earth going to get a second chance? What's that rumbling? Alan, give me seismograph reading. Seismograph indicates deep subterranean turbulence about a thousand miles from this location. With a reading of 9.9 .9 on the Richter scale, and, and Commander, the barometer is falling faster than I've ever seen before. Run the figures through the computer, Alan, and give me a readout. Okay, here it comes. Earthquake potential maximum. Tidal wave probability 99%. Cloud cover now encompassing rest of Earth will close in over this area. Conclusion, cataclysmic earthquake activity combined with cloud burst and tidal wave will create flood conditions engulfing whole planet. Commander, we gotta get out of here. I've got to try to warn the people first, Alan. Stand by. What are you going to do, John? Watch me. Grabbing the cumulator out of Victor's hands, he runs to the platform where Noah had been standing and shouts to the people. Listen to me, everyone, listen. You are in extreme danger. There is going to be a flood. You will all be drowned unless you go up to the mountains now. Don't listen to that stranger. He's as crazy as old Noah. Just look at the crazy way he's dressed. <laughs> <laughs> but I can prove what I say. <laughs> I have scientific evidence. <laughs> Come on, John, it's no use. They won't listen to you any more than they listen to Noah. What a frustrating feeling to know the tragedy about to happen and not to be able to do a thing about it. How can you change history that has already been recorded? Yeah, I guess you're right. Let's get back to the eagle. They reach the eagle, look back one last time and climb in just as a tremendous rumbling shakes the earth and ominous clouds close in. observation we can't answer that but feel that at least one man and his family have a chance what about us commander will we be going home no way paul given our moon's trajectory the earth will be far beyond eagle range at the end of the 40 days and 40 nights that storm is going to last 40 days and 40 nights where did you get those figures commander not even our main computer banks can predict that accurately just read the bible paul read the bible A few days later, in main mission. It was an extraordinary experience, John. But heartbreaking to be so close, and yet so far. Commander? Yes, Sandra? Computer, it's going berserk. Look. 
The date readings. Years clicking past like seconds. It started at 3347 BC, but look at it. It stopped. The year is 2002 AD, where we were before the whole thing began. Victor, any explanation? Well, I can just give you an educated guess. As we traveled farther and farther away from the area of the black hole, we may have returned through the time warp in space into our own era. Or were we all just the victims of a mass hallucination brought on by the mind-twisting forces set loose in the pressures of a space storm? We may never know, but whatever it was, it was good to have been home again, even if just for a few hours. Uh -huh.